Tengo el regular meeting of the city in Texas. It's Wednesday, January 22nd, 2020. It's uh, 6 07. We're in Commission uh, Chambers uh, in City Hall. Uh, we're going to item number one. A uh, call to order and invocation and uh, pledge of allegiance. I'm going to ask uh, Brother to please meet us and uh, the invocation. I'm going to ask uh, Ray to lead us in the pledge. Let us pray. Holy and good and faithful God, we know that you are here with us, guiding us, helping us to be a people who remind one another that each of us matters, each of us is loved by you, is claimed by you, each of our hairs is counted by you. Oh God, may this be an occasion where the work that we do here might flow from this place to help the residents of Rio Grande City and beyond, all for your glory. We ask for all of these things in Jesus' name and only by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. to include 
encourage residents and our community to participate. Encourage people in our community to place an emphasis on the 2020 census and participate in events and initiatives that will raise awareness and ensure a complete and accurate census. Support census takers as they help our community complete an accurate count. Seek opportunities to collaborate with other like-minded groups in our community by establishing a Rio Grande City Census 2020 Complete Count Committee and utilizing high-profile, trusted voices to advocate on behalf of the 2020 Census. In witness thereof, I have here on two set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Virginia City, Texas, to be fixed here too on this 22nd day of January 2020. Oh, I get that. The uh, mayor of the city of Virginia City. It's a long uh, proclamation, <coughs> but an important one, and I want to recognize some of those trusted voices and advocates for the city that are here with me today. Please stand. And Commissioner, you will please give them a round of applause. together uh, to promote the message of the census and work for getting the uh, count this spring. And so we have representatives from education, we have representatives from the public sector, uh, faith-based community organizations, and others, uh, and I am in the private sector and in just the regular uh, uh, resident body. And we appreciate the time that you contribute to this because we know that it's an important cause. And we also have with us our partnership <coughs> specialist, and Yasema Garcia is local. She's from Star County. And Ms. Garcia, are you joining me up here? Oh, okay, sure. She has uh, brought us together and has allowed <coughs> us to uh, combine our efforts to put a better message out in the 2020 census. And I wanted her to introduce herself because she's new to the program, uh -huh. but no stranger to Star County. Hello, and thank you for having me. I'm Ines Sandra Garcia. I am local. I'm originally from Roma. Um, I've been in, in Edinburgh for, you know, 30 years or so, but I, my mom is still here, all my family. Uh, and I'm really happy to, to be a part of the community. Um, this morning we had a really, really awesome um, uh, presentation. It was on getting everybody together, um, basically to, to see if we qualify some, some funds are out there, uh, but at the same time, I believe it was it might have been the first time that we all came together as a community. So it was representation from Star County and Roma ISD and Rio Grande City ISD, San Isidro ISD, City of Rio um, Grande um, City, City of um, Rio Grande. And so, uh, so we all came together talking about the proposal, but at the same time, we we're talking about strategies that we got to maybe for the first time see. Okay, so the, here's the complete count committee. Uh, got from Roma, I can partner with the Escobadas because they also have a complete count committee at, at Roma, and then the county and so forth. So, so it was a very, um, it was a very good meeting because now um, it's it's a lot better if we find out what everybody else is doing because we can partner with them and take advantage of what's already happening and then make our, our message a lot stronger. So, uh, so I'm here um, as representing the U.S. Census Bureau, and your goal is the same as ours. Um, South Texas is a hard-to-count area. Um, historically, we have not done as well as other parts of the state in terms of the, uh, the self-response rate, and so we, we want to make sure that we do better. As you all know, um, the more people that we get to respond, the more funding that, that we get. And uh, there are some areas that are even more, they're hard to count. So South Texas is hard to count. And then Star County is a little bit even harder because there's a lot of rural communities. And so it's harder to get that survey out there. A lot of the surveys are going to be hand delivered for that reason. So it's just a, a bigger challenge. And so the more that we work together, as a community and with the Census Bureau and with all the sectors of uh, the city, whether you know, it's the health, the faith-based, the business, the education, and you know what? 
it's happening, and so I'm just happy to tell you all that uh, you know we have very high hopes that we're going to do a lot, lot better, and that is just all good news for for the community. So I, again, I thank you all for having me today. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Together, we make sure we take a photo and, and get the message out that we are organized and that we are ready to push the census message forward. So if you don't mind for a moment and with your permission, we'd like to get a photo with our members who are here today. Um, sure. Thank you. Thank you.
great thing that we have also we've added to our library and we have Ms. Janice Cantu Cifuentes and I'll introduce her to you all. And she replaces Stephanie. Thank you, Ms. Fultz, and congratulations, and uh, thank you to uh, those that worked on the grant and for being persistent, and congratulations again. Do you have a letter of recognition from the uh, Well, I have. You want to take a
Um, like I said, I just it, it all goes to the staff outside because they're the ones that are out there um, working in day in and day out. We work over the weekend just to make sure we're ready to go on TCP and Most of everything that was identified today, there are minor violations that can be fixed in 14 days. We're talking about areas that need to be cleaned and marked properly, but we're not talking about major issues. These things can be fixed in 14 days. Yeah, uh, it, so any, and they're not violations, they're just uh, some concerns. That's what she addresses them as right now, they're concerns. Um, obviously it's an old facility and she's very well aware of that. Um, so she, we have about 14 days to remedy those before they get reported as a violation. So uh, even as we were speaking, uh, Mr. Cantu and Enrique Cantu was already out there fixing some of those issues um, with, with his staff. So, I mean, they saw that how, how quickly we were responding. Which, like I said, just goes to show what the work of our guys are doing. So, Mr. Cruz, at the next meeting, can we see a copy of that report and the findings and what are we doing to address those concerns? The, the, the old the ones or the new ones? The, 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 yeah. Whatever you get, uh, you know, I just yeah. like the next meeting, plus there's some of the concerns that they're bringing up you and, uh, of course, uh, the kind of action moving forward to address those concerns. Yes, sir. And, and also, what we we'll, we'll, uh, want to do as well, too, is uh, bring the plan of action of what Rob the Commission wants to do as far as improving the water plan in one direction, because obviously that's the big elephant in the room is the capacity. Um, and, and she's well aware of it, and that was a question I brought up to, to her as well too, is, uh, you know, what are our options? Because obviously I know our, our engineer mentioned that there's possible other grants that we can go out for, but we'd have to wait a little bit longer, possibly another year, uh, after we go out for that funding and to be able to receive notice of, of funding. Um, un unfortunately, we've kind of pushed the ball on, on this, you know, a long time now, so they didn't want to see some actions pretty soon. Uh, so that's what we'll have to come to the commission and see uh, what direction the commission wants to go with this. Um, also, the report of uh, the water tanks, if you haven't noticed, are, are being uh, construct, uh, constructed and, and uh, maintained and, and brought back up to code. Uh, we have about two weeks left on the one that you see that's currently being uh, uh, repaired right now. Uh, I know Mr. Commissioner Jones had, had voiced that he wanted the same logo that was in the old one uh, to be on the, the new one that's being redone, so that's going to be done. And then as soon as they get done with that, they'll be heading over to the Hidalgo tank, which will take them about another 30 days. So uh, they're moving. It did, does not affect the schedule of what we currently have. I want to make that very clear. It does not affect the schedule of uh, any other tanks and their maintenance. Um, they're actually back on track with everything because uh, they have brought two crews down just to make sure that they caught up on everything. Uh, they had some weather delays up north, but they're since brought an extra crew to help them catch up on everything. Yeah, just to give you a background, they were scheduled to come in late last year, but weather kept them in working in another site, in another state, and now they're catching up. For public information, it won't uh, interrupt with uh, public service either? No, sir. Actually, uh, and I, I know we had talked about it, and that's another thing we want to bring to the, the, the council is, uh, after meeting with Mr. Cantu, uh, Enrique Cantu, and our engineers, and Mr. Perez, uh, we have some, some goals and some plans that once we get that tank up and operational, Commissioner, uh, we, it's going to actually help uh, with the pressure throughout the, the city as well too. Uh, so we have some plans. Obviously, I don't want to bring anything formal to you right now. It's all preliminary. It's some ideas that we're trying to bounce around. Um, but hopefully by next commission, we can have all this stuff uh, in a full report for you guys so that we can make a decision on which route to go. Any questions? Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Two million dollars. Yes, sir. Forgive all the so they don't say that. Anyone else? Mr. Blood? Uh, if you don't want to add back to the report? Sure. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, this is a report on the same tax project. Smith the Brown Ray King, you've seen a lot of activity out here. Uh, the majority of course is very notable when, when they pull down all the trees and the railroad tracks were removed. But just some numbers so you can see how much is in the advance. Under the pre court, we have a tractor by Jelly. His contract is for a million three hundred and eighty-nine thousand eight hundred and forty-four dollars and sixty cents. Of this, up to this uh, date of January the 17th, 82,000 cubic yards have been removed of dirt. So a lot of the first tracks along the highway are basically already at the flood elevation. Uh, they still have to do their compacting, welding, and get a survey out to confirm that. Uh, Ms. Perez, that, that's about 25% there? 
Uh, of the total project? Yes. Yes. Okay. The total project of the excavation, they're all set 35. Because that includes a lot of the period of the building, the total, total contract. So, you know, when you look at it, we have about 365,000 kidney guards. It's going, it's moving, but eventually you say to it, so what does it be? On the other side, you also see some of the work being done on, behind the Apple Bell, the water and all that. That's part of the off-site improvements, and those are part of the agreement. We have the 380 agreement, so those off-site support all the infrastructure for sewer uh, for the site. And that is a line taken from the site and the to the lift station. And then from the lift station behind Point West, it's also part of the utility part of it, all coinciding to bring the support to the site. The uh, water has also been ordered to Highway 3, uh, and that's the water portion, to bring, and along the new 75. And uh, eventually we're going to start with the utility infrastructure on Rapid Drive. That will be like, like a couple of weeks. So the utility uh, offsites, that's $295,773.34. And the storm sewer and the asphalt is $859,319. Uh, utility with Five Star and the Rapid Drive with GOC construction. So all of the different facets of the project, utilities, the creek, the Rapid Drive, the Clomar, they're all being working simultaneously, including the subdivision plan where we have many department to get all the traditions made to report the plan and therefore the developer can start you know, making his own transactions with the tenants. We have received from one of the tenants a site plan and the uh, pillar sign design that they have. So we know that this is within the next month, a couple months, we'll actually be seeing some of the streets going in there. Um, another note that I want to bring up uh, to you is uh, we ask questions on the project. Uh, it's our voluntary income tax uh, assistance program will start on the 27th. Uh, close to 300 families are assisted free of charge. Uh, the city has, you know, graciously led the city hall from 5 to 7.30 uh, p.m. and it's free of charge. Uh, last year, a little over 200,000 people came back to the community from these free services. We wanted to make that known out. And lastly, um, the WEBDA uh, marker, it's a historic marker, will be set up at the STC. And we all recall we had a great, a great opening of the KC, uh, Kelsey Bass Museum, uh, as being the strike, the Mellon strike of 1961, as the civil rights movement down in South Texas. So that would be the way that it is uh, on the city. And that's on the 31st, we <coughs> see at 11 o'clock. Uh, so there's probably no questions, that's my Do you have any numbers on the buyer? I know that they've been going up. Yes. Uh, I know that <clears throat> when we first moved up here, it kind of went down, but we're already like over 200. We're like 280 you know, families. And the refunds uh, get greater because of the allowance we made. Um, once it was about 277 thousand that actually came in last year, we're not able to present those. Thank you, so. Mr. Perez, uh, one quick uh, also a reminder, because Ms. Bay has talked about free assistance, remind me that tomorrow uh, we just got a, an email that we'll be having a, a, another food drive tomorrow from a large food bank, and it'll be located here at City Hall. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to do this on a monthly basis to help the community out. Um, so that will be tomorrow, same time that we usually do it. Uh, if, if any of the commission has an opportunity to come out, it'd be great for you to come out and, and, and obviously see the the amount of people that were able to assist. I think last time we helped over 1,500 people. Um, so every time it gets a little bit bigger and bigger. So uh, that will be tomorrow. And that's uh, being donated by some private uh, companies and uh, RGB Food Bank. So just a reminder. Are we posted it on the website? No, Ashley. Ashley? I'm sorry? Are we posted the information on the website? Not yet, but I received it just before the meeting started. So it will be posted on yeah. the yeah, the, the, uh, they should request that we don't post it uh, to an advance because um, the crap. The, it, it can get pretty, uh, so the, the, they request that we post it at least 
you know, a couple hours before I'm going to be posted, but uh, it will be posted before the end of the week. I was going to post it, um, yeah, next week, but it's going to be over just because it's really soon. Like, so you know what I'm saying? Um, she said that it has to be posted really early. People's going to show up from out of town as well. Um, and it just, it's so boring and sometimes, you know, there's only its supplies. So. Last, last month, and uh, we had some private. Uh, Produce companies that came all the way from Edinburgh uh, to come assist and donate uh, some of the produce as well too. Um, so I'm going to try to get them out here again tomorrow. Uh, it's just awesome to see you know some of these private companies coming in, our produce companies, and joining uh, efforts with the RJ Food Bank to, to help the community. So uh, we'll be having that going tomorrow. Thank you. Good evening. I'm agreed. I just wanted to share some yield and permit valuation numbers that I'm sure you'd like to hear. My total about 2018 on residential construction, and again, this is building only. We had over $8 million of investments, and in commercial, we had over $6 million. 2019 on residential, it was tonight over $9 million in residential construction and in commercial. 16 or 16 million dollars, that's 10 million dollars more than uh, 2018. And obviously this year is not disappointing. Uh, we've been very busy with uh, homes. You can drive around, you see at least a home or business. Uh, you see also Main Street, you got new businesses, new buildings. The Gladigal Lumber building that was discussed in the previous meeting that's coming out for, you know, it's going to be remodeled extensively, so you got another historic building that you don't have to worry about that it's falling apart. Um, we're growing, and we're staying busy, and we'll start the numbers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anyone else we're missing? <coughs> we're good. <coughs> so. No questions from the council for employment? No. Let's go ahead and uh, move on to item uh, number two, uh, consent agenda. Uh, we have uh, item A, approval of uh, departmental travel requests, approval of uh, minutes uh, from uh, previous meetings, and approval uh, of action taken at the meeting of the River Grande City ABCL on December 18, 2019. You can either take them all together or separate. Well, Mayor Portana, if there are no uh, changes or concerns, I have a motion to approve items uh, 2A, B, and C. I second. A uh, motion from uh, Mr. Rodriguez and a second from Mr. Jones. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those against say aye. All those in favor. We'll move on to item number three resolutions. At a rate, Discussion and possible action approving resolution number 2020-1 for the Edward Byron Memorial Justice Assistance Grant and required matching funds. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Uh, this grant is our drug and human trafficking uh, grant, which allows uh, our department to actually hire an officer. Uh, to just maybe do drug interdiction and human trafficking uh, throughout the city without having to respond to calls. We are applying uh, for continuance this year for $42,525 with 84 cents. That is to include fringe benefits as well. So it's the salary plus the fringe benefits. Uh, we just need a resolution to continue this process of the grant. And the officer we currently have hired through that grant is Octaviano Ramos. This is the first year for this grant? Or we have this no, we've had this grant uh, since 2016. But this, this is Mr. Ramos. I mean, this, this, uh, this is going to be his first second, second year. Second year. Yes. What kind of things are they doing specifically to combat the traffic and all that? Uh, of course, he runs traffic interdiction. Uh, he's been concentrating a lot on hitting uh, drug houses, crack houses. I know in the month of December, he hit three houses in one day uh, with search warrants. Uh, so he is continuously working, uh, trying to get information where they're selling narcotics within the city limits. 
you see what is also closely with the border control, or with the human trafficking aspect of it, or just still the PV? Uh, he's working with the mainly border control, with our Ohio guys and the SCU as well. Uh, regarding the actual human trafficking, uh, luckily we haven't come across actual human trafficking where they're actual sex trafficking or slavery. Uh, mainly it's just the undocumented that are crossing uh, on a regular basis, passing through our cities. Uh, we have to base our permits on square footage or other uh, 
ways, but not to have the valuation. Uh, again, this is an ordinance that we have to enforce. Uh, the uh, numbers, I'm going to start at 32 uh, cents per square feet. And we did to a uh, comparable city like the city of Hidalgo. We didn't uh, compare it to McAllen or San Antonio. And actually, each city, they got their own ways of, of charging. Uh, some of the cities, they have lower fees, but then they have, you know, more fees like part of the medication fees, you know, twice the size as, as we require. If, if you're concerned about uh, permit fees to increase, no, this is not increased. It's just based on square footage. And the way the math is about the same fee that they want to pay, except just the way we collect the fees. So we, when, you, when you have the number of 32 cents, that's coming from, how do we arrive at the 32 cents per square foot? Again, uh, all cities value wide, they're based on, on, on there's charge cents per square foot. And this is similar to uh, the sister city of Hidalgo, okay. same, same size of city. Uh, McAllen charges, I think, 16, 17 cents, but then their park fees are like seven or eight hundred dollars a year, which is the, basically the total amount we want to collect. Uh, it, at the end of the year. And this number here balances out as far as the cost of having to go through the process, manpower, Correct. Hours, time, fees, gas, all that. I mean, it, it, Again, on a, on a 1,500 uh, square feet home, they're going to be paying about $800, which is what they're already paying at this point. Okay. Let, let me clarify also if it meets residential building permits, but the actual ordinance that we instructed to draft is just for building permits. Yes. It includes commercial. Mm -hmm. Okay. At the same rate, 30 cents per square foot? That's what we instructed, so. I just want to make sure yes. that you understand it's a building permit uh, that includes residential and commercial. Mm -hmm. Like just building. Yeah. You can move the work I have talked to uh, Victor. Yes. And, uh, but I told him also that this only applies to residential. It doesn't have, you don't have to change the way you play for commercial. It's only residential. One of those new laws that stay in So the changes on the residential, how we charge, it's based now on square footage. Correct. And it was not being done in square footage at residential. It was just a valuation, just like commercial. Right. Commercial can stay, but the state specifically asked for cities to, to be based on that valuation, but any other means or ways. Well, then you, you <coughs> can drop the ordinance to specifically be residential. The our instructions were to just do it. The ordinance that's correct. regarding building. Yes. But if you if you don't wish, we can just be specific, which uh, and just word it for residential building permits. But our instructions were drafted for just building permits. And Mr. we need to take this asking you to amend the residential, correct? Yes, yeah, so only residential. We don't have to change any other things. So that's being started at, at, per square foot as opposed right. to the rest of the rest right. that's uh, charged at. Uh, that makes sure that Correct. That's the way it used to be. So, so if you leave it this, the way it is, both commercial and residential are now being charged based on square footage. Correct. It is correct. Okay? It used to be commercial was square footage and residential was valuation. Now they're both the same. So if you leave it the way it is, it is correct for both because they're both by square footage. Does that make sense? So the attorney just needs the clarification on how he's going to work that uh, correct. Well, you, you all let us know. I mean, again. Well, his point is, if you do it only residential, it is correct because the only change is on the residential. If okay. you leave it the way it is for both, it's still correct because you were already doing square footage for commercial. Okay. Now you're just adding uh, the residential part to the square footage. Okay. So they're both correct. I mean, I suggest we leave it. The way it is, okay. just right. like it's in, it, it covers you all oh, oh, oh. right. right. And the only thing we do need to correct um, is on the first page. Um, it's actually the first reading. The work works in, it says December of 2019, and I already talked to the say the work correct it. Some type of it. But everything else, uh, I think, is correct. <laughs> So any additions or subtractions or correction, we can still do it second reading and at this point entertain a motion. 
Okay. So, okay, we have a motion to approve item 4A by Commissioner Ramirez. Second. Second by Commissioner Flores. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Milan. Next uh, is item 5, contracts and agreements. Letter A, discussion and possible action to approve correction to change order number one to the contract with Five Star Construction for the lift station project. What do we have there? Mr. Yes. yes. Sometime back, uh, change order number one was approved by council, and this was to make some changes that were brought up at the BBDA uh, lift station, so there was some field changes in that trade the change order. What happened, and I think in your car you have the, the change order that been approved, there was a tax close of the, of the number, and it was an error of $1,000. So the change order on, on record replaced the correct amended contract amount. So field deals came back with the correct the change order number one, replacing the correct contract amount, and so that will replace the change order number one that was previously approved. What was the difference in the amount, just to be sure? $1,000. $1,000? Yes. And it's not in favor or of the contractor. It was just to reflect the correct amended contract amount. It's time to entertain a motion or any further questions. Awesome. Okay, we have a motion to approve item 5A by Commissioner Ramirez, second by Commissioner Daza. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Bass. Next is item 5B, discussion and possible action to approve the lease agreement with Valley Metro for rental premises at 408 East Main Street, Bessie's Landing. Mayor, Commissioner, um, this is a renewal of the lease agreement with uh, Valley Metro. The, uh, the only thing I'm, I would propose changing is, and, and Chief Sully, are you still here? Yes, sir. Um, they, in the, in the previous agreement, they had asked to mark off uh, part of the parking area in the front of by the police department. I was really, maybe I don't go off with them, but I've never really seen them use their parking buses there. Is that the case? Yeah, I've never seen buses parked there. We really told our officers and our staff not to park beyond them. But I've never seen a bus. So we have a dedicated yeah. space in the front on yeah. Main Street. But I've seen it, uh, yeah, you're right. I've never but they're not utilizing it. So that's the only change I would like so to make. So the point of that uh, session, the session not for them was to uh, pick up and drop off or right. to the park? Just to drop, pick up and drop off. But they're not using it. Right. right. So my proposal is let's get rid of that space since it's not being utilized because that's prime property for people if they didn't want to stop right. by the downtown area. Sure. I agree. That's it. Agreement okay. with the modification of parking space. This is a one year uh, contract for this? Yes, sir. Okay, at this time, do we entertain a motion? All right, so we'll go for it. Okay, and we would not be able to do a motion to approve by Commissioner Jones. We have a second by Commissioner Ramirez with the modifications to the lease agreement. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And carries next is item 5C. Discussion of possible action to approve a memorandum of understanding between the Villa City Public Library and South Texas College for a continuing education certificate of completion in Learner Web Program. See. We got Miss Fultz. Where is she? She's next door in the middle there. Yes. Uh, there we go. <coughs> this is uh, what I understand is the more you between uh, the library and SDC to for continuing education certification and, uh, and using the web uh, as, a, as a tool to uh, get certified. And I will probably have to refer to Ms. Um, Foles on the details about the program itself. <laughs> well, we just started that uh, book club with uh, Oprah's. Yes, yeah. <laughs> they're on a high note right now. 
So I went in there, uh, they had received the books, and they had a meeting, and they had the book in a bag, and I mean, I walked in there. You see, we were there, and actually was with me, so we took a picture, and I offered them $100, and they were paying for the book, and they were not buying it. So I was told to come and we were just talking about overall. Can you elaborate a little more? You can elaborate on SDC. Yes, we were approached by SDC. Program that is uh, to teach basic computer classes, advanced computer classes. So our staff went through a training already, and so we were going to uh, open it up. Well, we were going to start advertising the newspaper, but we started just in the library, and we already have 10 people signed up. So the idea is to have them meet once a week, probably for two hours, and uh, you know, and it will help them. And at the end of the, like for example, the basic computer classes. They'll uh, get a certificate that they complete that program. Yeah, yeah. And then there's advanced, there's health literacy, and there's financial literacy. So there's different components. And SEC will come in and give so make it a little bit more formal and give them a certificate. So we're very excited about partnering with them, and uh, we have the MOU, and hopefully we'll approve it. And the certificate will translate to the uh, public library or city local, or what do we have? Right yes, we're going to work with them on that. So it'll be a joint venture. Camille Lane goes to 
Chapo Blanco and Santa Maria Street. And it's a Jackson Street going north. Uh, Motion at this time. I have a motion by Commissioner Ramirez. 
Second, the second like a missionary, second the commission of Flores. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next is item 6D, discussion of possible action on wine and beer on premise license by Oscar Gonzalez for property located at 601 East Main Street in Villa City, Fair County, Texas. This is the uh, Chase Wine and Pet Bar. The Warden House Chase Restaurant is kind of like the life of there. Another business downtown for the city opening. And this is there's a mixture, by the way, social mixture this Friday. Yeah. There at that location, or everyone that's invited. Again, it's promoting the businesses in the Main Street area. Yes. And it's going to be there at the city. Yes. It's a food food. Mr. Gonzalez will be probably the fourth, if not going towards the fifth business. In town, actually, within the historic district that it opens. Okay. okay, do we have a motion at this time? I so move to have a motion. Second approved by Commissioner Ramirez, second by Commissioner Raksa. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries.